One of the primary design goals of Siebel 8 is to empower users to deliver best-in-class sales, marketing, and service out to their customers. We met that design goal by creating a process-driven interface that allows you to implement best practices within Siebel. So what you see here on the right is the standard ad hoc UI that everyone's very used to, and that's still here within Siebel, but we've actually created a new UI on top of that, an additive UI that we call the task UI and that allows you to really navigate the more sophisticated processes you might have. So let's take the example of a uh, wireless company that's doing uh, cell phone sales and service. When a user calls in from the account screen, you can actually see the types of things that you could do for that user. You could create a service request, create a new order. The nice thing is that this is very object specific, so I might see different things on the service request screen or the opportunity screen than I would see on the account screen. And if I'm a VP, I'd see a different series of processes also. So let's drill into this. And in this case, the customer might be calling in about a service request. And so what happens when I drill into a task is we move from a very data dense UI to one that is much simpler and it only tells me the information I need to complete a particular task. And the great thing is it prompts me up at the top here, okay, first off, what do I need to do? It tells me validate the customer information. And so here is all the information I need to do to do just that. More importantly, we've got more high value information through our real time decisioning. It actually tells me what's the likelihood this customer will churn, what's the customer value, and so forth, so that I understand in real time, you know, where should I be giving this customer in terms of, uh, of incentives and how much do we, you know, how important are they because of a, a long shopping history and so forth. The nice thing is that once I've completed this step in the task, I don't need to know where to go. I can hit the next button and the system will automatically take me to the next step in the process and tell me what do I need to do here. In this case, it gives me a history of all the interactions with the customer, uh, earlier service requests they have, so that I can look through those, as well as a nice listing of what the customer currently owns in terms of assets, so I can actually alert them if there are any information about those assets they need to know. The nice thing is I can actually make choices here about whether this is an old issue or a new issue. If it's an old issue, I can press Next, and the system will brief me on that particular issue. If I press, uh, if I decide it's a new issue, I can come back, and the customer then can give me the information. The nice thing is, as I make a different choice here, it will actually take me to a different set of screens and steps because this is very much a branching capability that allows you to really make decisions on the fly and move down different paths. So that was a user-initiated branching. Obviously, we could do things like system-initiated, grabbing information from other, other systems like uh, the credit check and so forth, and based on those results, can put it over to other systems also. So in this case, we've got uh, information that's already pre-defaulted because we knew what the customer had. And uh, it, the customer tells me, for instance, that they actually can't uh, get their phone battery to charge anymore. So I could put that information in the sub area. And as I move through to the next step in the task, it actually pulls that information, not only about the asset, but some particular issues or solutions that might help out the customer. Now, in this case, it tells me uh, that the, the customer looks like they haven't updated this phone since about 1980 uh, because it's a little old. As a matter of fact, if I, if I mouse over and look at the, the text of the description, it actually tells me that uh, it's probably going to be cheaper for the customer to replace this. So at this point, then I can actually jump out of this process and move over to another one. And that's another one of the big features. We actually don't commit this information into the database until you finish the task or, or decide to. So you can cancel out without having saved that information, which means that you don't have to worry about the, as much about the quality of data in the database. Or if you're integrating to back-end systems, you can make sure that information that's ready to be submitted back to those systems is complete. In this case, the customer may decide that they're interested in finding a new phone. So we'll click on the order a new phone task, and this will actually bring up a list of things the customer might be interested in. Now we talked earlier about the 
primary design goal of being empowering users. Well, if you empower users, of course, you need to be able to give them the information they need to make decisions. So in, in this case, we're able to leverage the real-time decisioning features to look at not just this customer, but this type of customer, this profile of customer of what are the things they might be interested in. So it might be a, a camera and Bluetooth and so forth. And if I go on through, it'll bring up the uh, recommended technology or products that the customers might be interested in. And in this case, as I discuss it with the customer, they may say that they might not need the camera or the GPS. So I can go back and update the th items that the customer is interested in. And two things happen when I do this. First off, the profile of, of these types of users is updated so that over time what we recommend to the users gets more and more accurate. And secondly, we're actually leveraging the customer order management features that we had in 7.8 that basically allow us to do things like pricing, bundling, and so forth. So when I add this to the cart, I can actually see here it didn't just bring across the phone itself, it brought across uh, accessories and so forth and added in the special pricing for upgrading these customers. The other thing that was very important to us is making sure that this type of process enablement really matched what the real world needs of the customers were. So we spent a lot of time talking with them about what they needed from business processes within CRM. One of the things they told us is that as you're walking through a process, for instance, you're about to purchase this phone, the customer might say, you know what, I'd like to find out a little more information. Or they might ask you to do something that's not within the task. So customers very much wanted the ability to pause a task. When I pause a task, it literally puts it in an inbox, and then I can go out and do anything else I'd like. So in this case, a customer might want to search for some information, find out a little more about this. So I can go over to the search pane and type that in. And the search pane is another new feature of 8.0 that basically allows us to take information from across the enterprise, index it, and show the results within Siebel. That's important. You don't have to bring the information into Siebel because it might be sitting out in a file store with some PDFs. It might be out in uh, an intranet website or an external website. So these, however, can be indexed and displayed here so that when I search for something, it comes back with information across all these systems for instance, the file store, the email system, and so forth, but also with little, a little bit of teaser text, as well as the ability to link into these just by clicking on them. So then I can bring up that information from the file store. The, the critical piece here is that we are playing the data where it lies. It doesn't require the information to be uh, within Siebel anymore, which makes it very easy to make Siebel the central cockpit for information, but not require people to be there. So moving back to Siebel then, the, what we talked about was the ability to pause a task, and if I go over to the inbox, I of course could resume that task very easily, or uh, transfer it to another person, or even delete it. So what you've seen here then is through Siebel, we have created an end-to-end -end business process enablement that really allows you to take even complex tasks and, and model them in a very simple, simple fashion. In conclusion, the goal of Task UI is to provide a process-driven interface that you can use to model your best practices in an easy-to-use way. It lowers training costs, improves data quality, and most important, it can help you drive best practices throughout your organization. Thank you. For more information, please come to www.oracle.com/crm. Thanks.